of this best of three semi-final matchup in the top left corner of the map here on Wardy TV Mondays number four. It is going to be Oliveira. Smauko, thank you so much for the fresh new subscription. Coming into the start of the series, in the bottom right, it is our Blue Protoss Max Packs. Shout out to our supporters of the 40 TV Monday events, which are OSC Esports, Winter Gaming, and Loco TV, helping to put the prize money up to $400 per week, and it is now guaranteed throughout the month of October, so all October long, every Monday, 40 TV Mondays will be here. The challenge pages are up, the signups are ready. The players should be fairly excited about that, so I'm sure they're loving that. And uh, thank you to you guys as well. I, I just want to say in general, the last few days has been incredible on the stream. Obviously, I know we've had the September deals and stuff, and the gifted subs obviously help a lot and all of that sort of stuff. But uh, we really have just had a, a really good week or two on the stream, and it's really great. It's really pushing the stream in the right direction. And I, I really mean it that when I say when the stream is doing well, we can run more StarCraft. So... The whole point of the festival was to kind of, again, do exactly that. Raise some funds so we can justify running more StarCraft following on. Uh, so, like I say, October is going to be absolutely jam-packed with SC2. We're already guaranteed to cast October the first seven days, at least. And we'll obviously have... I am away a couple of weekends in October, but we should have a lot of SC2 coming up outside of those couple of weekends that I'm away. should be pretty non-stop. So, that's all thanks to you guys with your subs, your primes... Even just watching the ads and stuff as well. The ad revenue was actually very successful over the last week or two as well. It actually goes a long way to helping out. So, yeah, shout out to you guys. Helping us to uh, keep on making StarCraft, basically. TLDR. Nice like you guys rock. Cell coming up. Cybercore on the way. Nexus building through. As we have got a reactor on the side of Oliveira. Festival ID book coming up. A command center building into play. SCV in production. And this probe. Of Max Pax pulling back down to the bottom right side of the map. The Zealot of Max Pax is going to come through as well, and it's going to move toward the upper left-hand side. So, to the top left we go. Zealot is going to be moving over there in just a couple of moments. Move that into position. We do have a, a Marine there straight away, ready to fight against that Zealot. So Zealot will take some shots immediately, taking some damage right off the bat. And the Marine's going to come back over, hitting that Zealot once more. Marines in general just going to continue to get rid of that, and that Zealot will indeed drop. Now the Marine's going to come over, try to fight against that Adept for a couple of moments as well. I want to follow. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to go through it so many times and try and process who's who's where on the uh, cast list. <laughs> My bad, guys. Sorry. Um, Adept's going to grab a, another couple of Marines to try and give up the pressure. Max Pax trying to put on some uh, little bits and pieces of damage here for the next couple of moments. Just going to bring that in and uh, see what we can do. Cyclone popping now, a couple of mules coming in as well. Just gonna be seeing that blink coming up. The cyclone and a couple extra marines all coming through also. You see a couple of depths still stepping up. Cyclones, marines gathering up as well there for a couple of seconds. Still got that blink coming through, extra gates coming online. We're just going to be seeing the Cyclone locking on. The couple of Adepts will continue to drop, so Adepts going down. Cyclone, the Marine's going to be there. The Cyclones will lock on. The Adept goes down again. Three SCVs being picked off. And the Medivac of Marines going to go back down to the bottom right-hand side. So just going to go cross over in that direction. I mean, Oliveira wanting to bring the pressure here right now. His Medivac of Marines, a couple of Cyclones. All setting up to move through here. A couple of additional stalkers coming online as well. I'm just going to start hitting a few of those marines right now. So damage being done. And good job by Max Pax up until this point. He's been able to get rid of a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the marines. Only one cyclone left. He didn't even have blink just yet. Now he will have blink. Got to be careful with that medevac. We blink onto it. I was going to say maybe too soon. But he's actually going to get it. Well, complete cleanup in Oliveira. Does not manage to do anything there.
These Dorkas up towards the top, just going to be seeing the bunker setting up, Engineering Bay and a Barracks coming through as well, a couple of additional SCVs. As the Stalker's going to blink forward, the Raven is going to take some shots as well, a little bit more damage dealt there as our Stalkers will come through, the couple of SCVs going down, the Raven still taking some hits. I mean, nice defense from uh, Max Vax, and he's shutting down that Raven already, the fact it's already going to be low HP, going to make it difficult to harass with, which is one of the main goals of Oliver with that Raven. Low HP, easy target, might even stop again across the map. The two Stalkers that are chasing it are taking a little bit of a cut. Now oh, looks as though they're going to come to the front instead, just going to leave reinforcements to deal with that Raven. Hopefully he doesn't uh, kind of forget about the fact that that Raven's low, because it would be kind of nice to actually just get there and finish it off without taking any damage. It's in the natural right now. Yeah, it's actually a little bit... Uh, a little bit sad, because we're going to end up actually only losing two probes. Two probes obviously end up on very low HP. Max Max is back in the main base. Jumps onto the siege tank here. Marines are going to struggle to do much. We are going to blink these stalkers by round. Obviously blinking in initially. Now Prism Micro on them out. That's a lot of SCVs that are going to go down. We get the blink back up. Do we have the time to get a warp in off? Going to be a big question as well as a few more SCVs continue to trade. The stalkers blinking out from the main base. GG is called from Oliveira. It's just too much damage being taken. This one has gotten out of control and out of grasp for him. And Max Max is going to open with that. In the top left corner of the map, our red Terran player down a game, looking to bounce back, Oliveira. In the top right hand side, our blue Protoss is going to be Max Pax. Up a game. Is the Nightmare happening on or after uh, Max Pax Oliveira? It's happening afterwards, so we will do semi finals one by one. The only reason we would never do that is if the semi-finals, if like the rest of the day was already very long. Uh, I mean, we get to the semis with two hours in the tournament spent. I don't think it's crazy to ask the players to wait for the other semi-final to be done to play it out like that. I mean, then you're looking at most of the time a four-hour tournament in total. I think it's pretty on point for, for an open cup. I always personally think three hours is a little bit short on our side. Four hours is a nice three point. Four and a half to five would be even better, but yeah, that's the four to five hours is really, to me, the the ideal place when it comes to uh, stream length or tournament length. Sometimes, I mean, streaming longer than, you know, four to five hours is actually quite nice sometimes, too. Just, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes that's quite nice as well. It's just also that uh, situation of, um, you know, it, it depends what you're doing, I guess. Sometimes it feels like a tournament can drag on too much. Sometimes I like doing, like, four or five hours of one tournament and, like, three hours of another tournament. Because then it kind of feels like you get a little refresh halfway through the day. Hmm. I see now Marine going to come up, going to chase after that probe, and that probe will go down. Cyber next core, Nexus. On the way through the command center in a factory building in the main base as well. So we continue to bring that online. And Nexus and the Wolf Gate coming through. The Adept is coming up also. Bring that out for the moment as yeah, Nexus continues through. The Adept is coming up. The Wolf Gate building in. And we see now our uh, units continuing to get settled here for the moment. So we'll see our first adept coming across the map. Our council building from Max Pax. It's coming up right here. It's going to be seeing this adept still shading forward, moving up the ramp at the moment. And again, side before, uh, sorry, Twilight Council's on the way, so we see exactly where Max Pax is coming. Adept gonna fire, Hellion goes down, a couple of Marines coming in. It's gonna be seeing the Adept's gonna shade by towards the main. Hold all. Just gonna get in position, Marine gonna get there. And you have the Adept going down. 
And blink coming through the couple gates coming by. Robo facility building. And, you know, like your trades, obviously you get a couple of marines and a hellion for a couple of depths. It's whatever. I mean, nice sometimes to have the hellions potentially able to run by. In this case, that's just not going to happen. That's the cyclone just come through and hits that stalker in a big way. Going to knock the stalker down there as well. So takes that out. A few Marines still flying, battery taking some damage. Stork is still chilling, Blink is about to be done. Prison coming up as well. And the Raven's coming up, about to finish. Couple of racks in Engineering Bay coming through. I see a few Marines are fighting. The bunker still settling. The Midvac loading up and jumping down. Stalkers selling. It's going to be seeing the blink up into the high ground. Tank firing away. A couple of Stalkers taking shots. Marines trying to come back over. Oh, the auditor comes down to the sides. And so Stalkers coming about. Prism coming through. It's going to be having ourselves the Nexus. About to be done on the side of Max Fax, and that means that free base is going to be set up. Still trying to apply pressure on the other side, but Oliver is doing a bit better job of dealing with that for the moment. So we'll hop to the high ground. Couple Marines going down. So you're going to take some big damage as well. I guess drop down right there is. We're going to be seeing our Stalkers continue to blink backward a little bit. Marine Marauder is still whacking away. Stalkers still having to blink back for the moment. So we're seeing our Bio still gathering in. Stim Combine plus one will help a lot for uh, Oliveira in dealing with this and also creating a counterattack as well. So that will be huge once we get to that point. Just having our charge. Put up for Max Packs. The extra gate's coming by. Stalkers gonna blink through, siege tank goes down, bunker will be killed, a few marines gonna get jumped on as well. And plus one combat shield still coming up, the Medivac Marine Marauder coming through. Eight charge on the way up as Max Pack's gonna try his best to whittle down these bio numbers before this force gets across the map. This is the point where Oliveira hits strength, right? His upgrades are all done, this is where his army is better than it has been. Stalkers don't even get that much more done before they have to blink it back. Scan comes down. Again, a mortal on the charge coming up. Additional gateways coming through. A bio back over the left hand side from Oliveira as we try and figure that out as well. The Widow Mine's going to finish up as well. Water Turret will drop down a couple of pro and get a couple of probes there. Probes still taking damage. Two probes going down. Looking for a third probe. Again, Immortal is about to finish. The charge is coming up. The plus one attack is coming in. Game pause. Well, we're going to have a pause, so we'll take a moment. Hopefully nothing too serious. Hopefully just a quick little moment or so, and we'll get back onto this one very soon. Resource Lost is actually a little bit all of uh, Max Pack's favorite. I mean, a couple of tanks going down is a little rough because that does take away some of your power setting up across the map. In this moment right now, Maxpack is obviously gunning for the other side again, and if he can get set up over here, I mean, there's a lot of units on the map. I mean, either you can do a lot with that, or you get surrounded, and perhaps that becomes dangerous, so... I guess we'll see what happens. Apparently, Oliveira's screen is problematic. So we're going to be able to resume. Game resumed. Stalkers get towards the upper left-hand side, and 
Like I say, maybe ends up surrounded here. There's going to be the bio on the map, and the Stalk's going to be very careful picking where they blink to. If they try and blink, oh, he's going to go blink into the main, but there's Widow Mines there. They're going to get a couple Stalkers immediately. Bio from the low ground is going to do okay. Another Widow Mine gets another Stalker. It will drop into the main base on top of these Stalkers. I mean, I don't know where they can blink to. Blinks to a corner, going to try and recall, but so many of these will die. How many live? One Stalker recalls away. Max Packs did get caught by that army. That's a massive amount of damage. As the Forge gets the plus one on the go. Huge moments right there. Absolutely huge. Proba Bay coming up on the side of Max Packs. Next is coming in. The plus one attack upgrade coming in on the Forge as well. The Zelda's going to get to work on the SCVs. More zealots around the left-hand side currently. Just going to try and take position as our bio, our mines, setting up as well. Just going to be seeing the rest of this bio force continue to come through as our army comes back over to the right. So just going to head on over there. The zealots are going to jump onto some SCVs as well. Wood of mine trying to hit. Stalkers get pushed back. It's going to see the pile on the next is both going down. Another wood of mine shot and the probe's getting hit as well. TV is going to take some damage as the zealots continue on to them. Bio's going to come through. A couple of zealots there. Going to get pushed back. Our stalker's still trying to come around. Oliver really trying to capitalize. I mean, he's lost so many SCVs, but he does have good army supply. Can he push through? What can he make happen as we just have the Colossus coming over? Again, a couple of ghosts coming out from Oliveira as well. The bio. Chilling toward the bottom right side. We see our stalkers. Bellets, Colossus continuing across as well. So we continue to move across here. Just for the moment. Bio has to take a couple of steps back. Continue to move through a little bit. The Dark Shrine coming up. Again, extended thermal lance. Plus one armor coming in. The next building also. Just for the moment as our stalkers will jump onto the Marines. Bio going to be coming straight through. The Colossus is going to get knocked down. Oliveira definitely making it difficult for Max Max to stay alive in this one. He's going to go for this base, and I do not blame him. Get rid of this third, and a lot of the rest of this game should be very okay for him. As Yeah, there's another Colossus on the way, but it's not even going to have range right from the get-go. I think we're very correct to go and uh, attack into this as we do just push on through. And we are going to make ourselves a very good case for making this a game three of the series as Oliveira... Coming through very nicely for the moment. I'm right, just going to jump into the high ground. A little bit more damage being done as we continue to move through. A couple of zelts going down. Pylon going to get grabbed. Warp gates are going to be depowered as well. Bosses and stalkers coming over. Just going to try and fight as. We have got a couple of zealots trying to charge it as well. No, the ghost. Oh my goodness, it goes down. And we do have, again, the extended thermal lance on the way up. So bringing that extended thermal lance through for the moment here. Again, the dark shrine continue to come in as well. Bio on the medevax unit still gathering in the center. Still got our Vikings and ghosts coming through. The Colossus is going to continue with this. Also, Max Pax moving through the middle of the map here. DD's bit finishing up. The extended thermal is not far from finishing. Zealots on the way. So we've seen our bio. Looks to play defensively. I mean, we're two bases as max packs. This is as all in as you're going to be in this game. Oliveira knows fine well that that means he just has to survive through this attack. And if max packs doesn't attack in, then Oliveira will just take a chance to get back on the map soon enough, I imagine. Currently dealing with the DTs pretty decently. Has not let them slip through for too much. There's one in the main base that we're pulling away from, but. No SCVs really going down. Let's see Oliveira originally was on a rough work account. He did lose 44 SCVs in the game. But yeah, making sure these DTs don't do much further at the moment. As the rest of this Protoss force sits out the front and readies up the attack. Oliveira actually going to cry and come and meet this. Coming in from two sides. Good EMPs initially. Only a couple of Vikings. So the Colossus are not going to go down super quickly. But I think the number of bio units should just be enough. 
As now we got a few units on the Colossus. Max Max gets cleaned up, and Oliveira will take us to game three of this series. So we are tied up. One final map of this series. Winner will move to the finals. Loser will walk away with just the $50 top four prize. Obviously, every series you win from this round of four onwards is doubling the prize money. So from $50 to $100 if you lose in the finals. And then if you win the finals, $200 for that first place prize. GLHF is called. Players are in-game. Alcyne is the battlefield. In the bottom left, our Chinese representative, former world champion of StarCraft II, the Red Terran, is Oliveira. And in the top right, our blue Protoss, we have ourselves Max Packs, representing Psy Storm Gaming. Game three. Everything on the line for today's event right here and now. Let's just settle down and see just who will do what. And what's gonna happen? having ourselves a, a couple of moments getting up and rolling here our probe moving around for a few moments as well trying to see what's going on Just having ourselves the couple of SCMEs moving through for the moment and get this underway Probe just scouting about, trying to nibble up a little bit for a little while. I'm seeing our factory coming up, SCV moving back over, I'm getting settled here. Oh, a few moments. Coming through then, Twilight Council building up, Probe, Stalker, Warp Gate coming around as well. Got our Hellion also just about to pop out of that factory. The couple of Reapers coming through. And the Hellion going to start swinging up onto the Adept for a couple of moments as the Reaper comes across as well. Adept very nearly getting that uh, SCV. It's going to be shading away. Denies the command center building for just a couple of moments. Obviously nothing too serious altogether. Let's just have two more barracks starting from Oliveira. So two more racks. On the back of this, and uh, that is obviously quite aggressive because you're going to play three racks, no starports. The bio play is going to set up a lot more quickly in this game. You're going to have a lot of ferocity with those bio units, but you're not going to have the healing of the starport. You're not going to have the harassment of a medevac early either. So going into this faster bio play does come at its costs. Yes, it can be great if the opponent is just unprepared and you just get to stim and do a ton of damage, but if Max Pax is obviously somewhat aware of it, and so he should be. There is ways that he just doesn't take damage, and then that becomes a little bit funkier. So we have another still coming through, a couple of gates coming by. It's going to be a little bit of a kill right there. We'll get a grab. As you see, the couple of Hellions coming about as well. Stalker's still chilling. We'll get coming through. Yeah, and a couple of gates, the robo facility coming by with the siege tank and marines coming up on the side of Oliveira as well, getting that all into play. Tank moves onto the naturals, just going to get that set up as well for a few moments.
Stem pack combat shield, siege tank. Obviously with the stem and combat shield is what we're really watching for. When those upgrades finish, do we get aggressive as Oliveira or is he just going to sit back? I mean, there's obviously good build into just a big bio tank push with those first couple of tanks on the way through. I see the Marine's going to get there. A couple of Sorgs going to get pushed back as the Prism will begin to micro. I start to look for some damage in these early stages. So you see the rest of the Stalkers warping. The Marine's going to press through. Bunker going to take a shot against Impact and Combat Shield. Not far from finishing, but this is Max Pax's time. Before those upgrades are done to try and make something happen. Stalk is a low HP. If he blinks in, I'm scared the tank's going to get quite a few kills already. And we'll blink in the tank. Uh, Stalk in the front can lift pretty quickly, but uh, it's going to be a comfortable defense, I think, from Oliveira altogether. You see those Stalkers and Max Packs just having to continue retreating away. We will be moving back from there for now. So just stepping out as our Stalkers will regather and get ready to go again, maybe. A couple of those stalkers taking shots. Bio gonna step through. Prism gonna begin to unload once again. Stalkers are gonna get that bunker that will go down, so the bunker will fall. I mean, we have Max Max still committing to this. I mean, the bio stemming up, having that power should be good to help push this back, but the stalker number is absolutely being a problem, and the SCV is having to pull so far forward as well. Stalker's going to shoot, a little bit of bio coming around, just going to see the SCVs coming over, and Oliveira is going to take a loss here, as he just doesn't have the numbers to hold off the Stalker force. We never saw his fast bio player really get to come to fruition there. 